الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستهديه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا ما يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله ثم أما بعد Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Ali Imran, Ba'da A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajim, reminding us of you know, our, our obligation towards da'wah and just sharing and conveying the, that beautiful gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen us out of everyone to grant and just enjoy. And wallahi brothers, before I mention the verse, as um, you know, subhanAllah just came last night from, from a long trip, 110 days, going to like eight different nations, just, just in the past year, maybe a year and three months, I went to about 25 different international destinations, over 20 uh, different countries. And subhanAllah, I was exposed to so many uh, cultures, religions, ways, languages, and, and, and I always, well, I feel so guilty that how come me, out of everyone else, Allah has chosen to, have, to give this gift, but then I'm not sharing it enough or I'm not doing what I am supposed to do as a Muslim. In a way, I feel selfish sometimes, but maybe I'm not working hard enough. Or maybe we, as an ummah, and this is exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said here in the verse said, وَلْتَكُنْ مِنْكُمْ أُمَّةٌ يَدْعُونَ إِلَى الْخَيْرِ وَيَأْمُرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَأَنْهَوْنَ عَلِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَأُولَئِكَ هُمْ مُفْلِحُونَ And let be amongst you. A nation, an entire nation. This is a commandment for every individual, every member of the Muslim Ummah. To do what? يَدْعُونَ الْخَيْرِ To invite mankind to the Khair. And here, according to the interpreters of the Qur'an, the Mufassirun, they say, what's meant by Al-Khair in this verse is a, a, Al-Islam. Meaning that they should be inviting and they should be conveying the message of Islam, sharing it with everyone else. And if they do so, Allah here said, يَدْعُونَ الْخَيْرِ At the same time, enjoying good, forbid evil. And if they do so, وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْمُفْلِحُونَ They shall be prosperous, they shall be successful. Meaning, wallahi, in this life before the hereafter. And maybe, why, this is why, uh, I mean, if you really ponder over the situation and the condition of the ummah today, and you find that, the Ummah is, you know, is not the same. I mean, it's so sad to admit that we are humiliated by, by almost every other nation. The most, the, you know, when we talk about like, you know, when we identify Muslims or the Muslim blood or the value of Muslims, unfortunately, is so low. It's almost sometimes worthless. This is why you find countless crimes can happen at Muslim nations and countries, but then no one really cares much about this because Muslims Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here said if you convey my message if you share this if you enjoin good and forbid evil you shall be successful meaning if, if you do not do so then you will not be successful you'll be something different without me mentioning what but brothers and sisters we have to also understand that we're not talking today about um, a virtue or something that is desirable, just desirable in Islam, or just something that is, you know, extra, as people say. We are speaking of a command, an obligation, something that the entire ummah, that all the scholars, the jurists of this ummah, unanimously agree that Dao is an obligation upon all Muslims. It's an obligation that you cannot escape. Whether you like it or not, especially it is really emphasized if you live in a non-Muslim environment, a non-Muslim country. Because at the end of the day, and I really want you to think about this for a moment. Really take a moment and think about this. MashaAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala again chose you out of so many people. You know, subhanAllah, traveling the world, you know, everybody, you know, whenever I visit, like, oh, we're from the America, it's my dream to visit. You know, it's, I, I love the U.S. I love the American dream. You guys are so lucky and this and this and that. Allah chose you and He granted you that opportunity. And you came here. And subhanAllah, again, these f frequent travels, it really hits me every time how comfortable we are here. 
how everything is so easy, how everything is so, I mean, reachable, and you could do whatever you want on every level. Economical, political, social, whatever you want. Wallahi, trust me. One of my um, last trips, I, w I went to Greece, and the brothers there, wallahi, they were telling me, it feels like we are in the Meccan era. This is what the kind of persecution we are receiving. They cannot even go out and give down in public. They get stabbed. They get, uh, wallahi, several cases. Almost every few days, a Muslim will get killed. Easy. Humiliation, there's just nothing. Insults, whatever. I mean, dawah is forbidden, strictly forbidden by the Greek law. This is not to mention the situation of our brothers in Western Europe, Eastern Europe, um, Asia, you know, some of the countries like China, which you, can, you cannot even think about dawah there. While we're so privileged with all these countless bounties from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yet, we chose to say, you know what? I'm, I'm not really, you know, a scholar. It's not really my obligation. Or maybe, you know what? Those people are just too arrogant. I'll speak to them about Islam. Talking about arrogance, wallahi brothers, and I, I'm telling you, this country is, I mean, and the people of this country are the, maybe some of the most open-minded people in the world. For them to be bombarded day and night by countless messages all over the media. Mainstream, left and right wing, whatever you, you want to call it. Everyone is just targeting Islam and just attacking Islam left and right. Yet they still listen to it. Yet you find, and subhanAllah, I have met with, some, like, you know, especially the, the past like four months. With almost all the major organizations of da'wah in the world. And they always tell me that we have Americans on the top three. Top three. Usually, when they count the nationalities or, you know, the countries where they get the most shahadahs, you find Americans are almost on the top three. According to U.S. religion census, they said that between the year 2000 and 2010, the, Muslim, the Muslims have grown in this country by the rate of 66.7%. 66.7%. And they compare this to the, you know, uh, mainline Christian, Protestant Christian. They said it is only 12.8. Meaning that we have grown five times. Five times as big as the mainline Christian Protestant of this country. And when we find the, um, the well-known book record, you know, Guinness of book, uh, you know, uh, book records, which basically brings all the you know, highest numbers in the world from all the you know, different accomplishments and fields. They admit that Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world by rate of what? Not by rate of birth, but by rate of conversion. Allahu Akbar. Are we doing anything even to bring this, uh, to make this happen? No. And I'll tell you why. You'll find, for example, Christian missionaries they are receiving, and guess, I really want you to guess that number before I even mention, but, but guess how much, how much they, they receive annually to support their missions worldwide. I want you to really think of a number. There are over $146 billion, billion with a B, get spent a year on missions like that to, to convert the world, and to bring him to, to Christ. Why we Muslims? No, we don't have any organized efforts. Um, of course, there are, but I'm, I'm saying like efforts focusing on sharing this message with non-Muslims. SubhanAllah, you find countless organizations focusing on Muslim youth and Muslim this and Muslim that. But then, how many of us, the Prophet Sallallahu in his da'wah, whether it's in Mecca or Medina, he worked on both. He worked on Muslims and also non-Muslims. If it was not for the efforts of the Prophet Sallallahu and for the Sahaba, some would have stayed in, not, not only in Arabia, actually would have stayed in only Mecca, Medina and At-Ta'if. After the death of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu we only had three cities that remain upon Islam, while everybody else committed apostasy. They left Islam, totally. With the exception of Mecca, Al-Madinah, and Al-Ta'if. But then the Sahaba, 
they understood that this responsibility and this obligation and they went all over the world and they sacrificed everything for it. They sacrificed their money, they sacrificed their own blood, they sacrificed their own families even. They left everything because they understood the hadith of the Prophet anni. It's a command. But convey for me even with one verse the hadith of Sahih al-Bukhari. And they also were thirsty to attain that pleasure that the Prophet ﷺ has promised in the authentic hadith, hadith that was related by Al-Bukhari and Muslim. As Sahil ibn Sa'd here narrates that the Messenger of Allah ﷺ has said, For Allah to guide through you one man, وفي صحيح البخاري في رواية الأخرى لا يهدي الله بك رجلا واحدا خير لك مما طلعت عليه الشمس وغربت وفي مسند أحمد والحديث حسن لا يهدي الله بك رجلا واحدا خير لك من الدنيا ما فيها three different narrations البخاري and Muslim second البخاري third أحمد the first one saying for Allah to guide through you an individual yes here it says رجل man but it's referring to male female a soul basically that will be better for you than what? Than a whole bunch of the red camels. Why the red camels? What's really the significance of it here? Because they were the most prized wealth of Arabia. It's like these days saying, you know, the most luxurious cars, like Lamborghinis and Ferraris and Maseratis and whatever you want to call it. The, the dream ride of every human being. And the scars here, they say, this applies to the greatest wish and dream and hope of any human being at any given time, wherever they are. This would apply to the most craved object or wealth at their time. No, guiding one person shall be better. And the second one makes it even more clear. When the Prophet here said, and the hadith is narrated by Anas ibn Malik and by Al-Bukhari. As here he said, for Allah to guide through you, one individual, one man, will be better for you than what? Than whatever has seen the sun. And the third narration makes it even more clear as Musnad Ahmad and the hadith actually is narrated by Mu'adh ibn Jabal. Here he says that the Prophet sallallahu said, for Allah to get through you, one man, one individual will be better for you than the whole universe and what it contains. How, how long does it really take to guide one, one person? MashaAllah, we hear, I mean, just, I mean, and alhamdulillah, this is something that you, MashaAllah, any of you brothers or sisters, can witness at any given time, you can just come with us out on the streets and attend any of our daily, alhamdulillah, da'wah sessions that take place in public, on the streets and the, at the mall, at the uh, public libraries, at the universities and elsewhere, alhamdulillah, countless of activities. And you can come yourself and witness and see how easy some of our brothers and sisters make it look like to guide people to Islam. It's not because they are, mashallah, I mean, skilled. Of course, the guidance is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but, but it takes definitely a lot of training. Those brothers, and I've witnessed so many of them with, per, me, with me personally, and I've always, alhamdulillah, had a great passion for da'wah since I was a teenager. I really wanted to go out and just share this beautiful, you know, thing, that precious, you know, treasure that I have with the rest of the world. And I felt it. You know, I... It was a call, and subhanAllah, you know, just ask Allah to guide me to, to do something about it, and alhamdulillah, he did. But I'm saying, some of those brothers and sisters, you go and witness doing it in public, subhanAllah, take some, sometimes 15-minute conversation, 20 minutes. With me personally, I've seen, you know, even five-minute conversations, you, you never know, you, you gotta try, and then you'll see, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised, فَذَكِّرْ إِنَّمَا أَنْتَ مُذَكِّرْ and he also said, First verse he said, and remind, you are nothing but a reminder. You don't have any control over them. And, but then the second verse said, and those who strive for our cause, meaning they do something, they, they exert the effort, they really try, and they do it, not just haphazardly like that, meaning that they really take, take all the Steps that are necessary to execute the job. I will guide them to my paths. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, said it clearly. You know, 
قل هذه سبيلي أدعو إلى الله على بصيرة أنا ومن اتبعني وسبحان الله وما أنا من المشركين سورة يوسف Say this is my path The most important task and mission that the Prophet was sent with is what? أدعو Giving da'wah Conveying the message of Islam To whom? أدعو إلى الله Calling people to Allah with what? Did he just say, give da'wah and, and that's it? No. Actually, put a prerequisite here, a condition for any of you. I'm not saying that this is, uh, should be discouraging, but rather should be encouraging to take, to take these means. He said here, ala basira, that I should give da'wah with certain knowledge. Meaning, I should seek some training. I should train myself. How come, brothers and sisters, if you want to do anything for a living, you always seek training. You always seek education. You really do whatever it takes. You go and spend even sometimes hundreds of thousands of dollars to get your college degree so that you can secure a job, right? So imagine the most important job, the most important tasks that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has chosen the most virtuous human beings to do, which is da'wah. It is something that signifies the real followers, the true, sincere, devout followers of all the prophets, da'wah. They, they just follow the same mission, follow the same path. But then he added here, Ana wa man ittaba'ani. Me and whoever follows me as well, not just me. Again, the verse in full, say this is my path. Calling mankind to Allah with certain knowledge, me and whoever follows me. Where are we brothers and sisters from this? How many times have we wondered, you know, how is it going to be like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked me on the day of judgment, what have you done for me? I've granted you all of these opportunities. I've chosen you from billions of human beings to bring you here to the U.S. And you were able to accomplish the American dream. What have you done for me? I've given you the nice house that you always dreamed of. The luxurious car family, health, just the countless, countless and countless bounties that you enjoy in this country. What have you done for me? Did you ever wonder what would be our response? Did you ever wonder that it is a responsibility that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us in this, with this in Surah Al-Baqarah when he says, بعد عوض بن اشترجيب إن الذين يكتمون ما أنزلنا من البينات والهدى من بعد ما بيناه للناس في الكتاب أولئك عنهم الله ويلعنهم اللاعنون. And brothers, I really want you and sisters to think of this verse and to really, I'm, I'm not trying to scare you, Allah, I'm not, rather trying to remind you. Allah here is saying, surely those who conceal what we've blessed them of, clear proofs and guidance. And Allah here is saying, مِن بَعْدِ مَا بَيَّنَّهُ لِلنَّاسِ فِي الْكِتَابِ Like he is adding, like almost that word, like how dare they do this. Like after we have made it evident and clear in the books, those shall be, or, or the, those shall receive the wrath of Allah. Brothers and sisters, who can even tolerate the wrath of Allah? We're talking about, and this hadith, or you know, actually this author is, Hassan Athar and uh, Malik ibn Dinar, rahimahullah, the famous uh, righteous uh, predecessor and an abid, he mentioned that to us. And I want you also to again put yourself in, you know, in, in that abid place as he mentioned to us his story that one time Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded two, two of his angels to go down. To a city, a sinful city that was just, you know, its people were very rebellious, very disobedient. They were wicked people. And he, he commanded both angels to destroy the city. So when they went down, they found out that there is a very devout worshiper in that city. And he is just indulge in ibadah and worship and dhikr and, and, and very, very, you know, righteous man. So they started wondering, you know, what's, what's, what is it with this man? I mean, shall we save him and then destroy the, you know, the city after, uh, you know, afterwards or, or, or what? 
So the, one of them suggests to the other, let's inquire about his situation with Allah the Almighty and we'll check, you know, what to do next. So they went asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, there is so and so there. And of course, Allah is the all-knower. So he told him a shocking answer when he said, That start with this person because surely his face color never changed one day for me. Meaning that this man did not care about his society. He did not care about their sins and just constant you know, disobedience and heedlessness and negligence. He just was just taking care of himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised to save the villages, not that are righteous. That Allah will not destroy the villages or the cities. If its people, its residents, where he didn't say righteous, but he said muslihun, not salihun. Muslih meaning rectifiers. They go out and they give da'wah and they remind their fellow brothers and sisters. So brothers and sisters, I'm Allah here today to remind you of this obligation. I'm just, you know, or mercy for mankind, alhamdulillah, we started about three years ago. And we started with just one unit. And subhanAllah, second, third, fourth, one country, then we went next to Europe. Alhamdulillah, Germany, France, Italy, Switzerland, Belgium, Netherlands, Poland, Greece, Bulgaria, Romania, India now, alhamdulillah, West Africa already. We already have in Shahadas in Africa. We just started recently there as well. And alhamdulillah, next, Brazil and uh, Japan, Korea. And alhamdulillah, this is mercy for mankind. This is the goal. And this is exactly what the Prophet Sallallahu himself was described in the Quran by Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala in Surah Al-Anbiya when he told him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ We've sent you as what? As mercy. For mankind. For all mankind. And this is our obligation. Wallahi, it again makes me wonder. Muslims, for 1400 years, we're talking about only a few decades after the death of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. We found Islam spreading from China all the way to Spain, right? And Muslims really understood this obligation. But now, what's happening? For centuries and centuries, we have abandoned this. And we have seen ourselves getting weaker and weaker. We're not, as Brother Hussein just mentioned earlier, we're not there to convert anyone. Rather, do our obligation by sharing the beautiful message of Islam. And wallah, if you do so, Allah will open the hearts of people and guide them. So subhanAllah, imagine if Allah guides through you one person, one man, then this man's offspring, progeny until the last day, until the day of judgment, will be in your scale of good deeds. Then you may say, well, you know, I'm not, I don't have, I'm not healed. Then you can learn. Well, if, if you're having a hard time learning, then there's also a, another beautiful virtue that you can enjoy as well. Your, your support. And this hadith is mentioned in Bukhari and Muslim. The Prophet said that for Allah to guide, uh, actually um, when he um, uh, mentioned when he was asked and he talked about the virtue of the support, supporting the efforts of da'wah and those who spread Islam, he said, وَمَنْ جَهَزَ غَازِيًا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ فَكَأَنَّمَا غَزَى And whoever, whoever sponsors financially, the one, whoever sponsors financially, the one who spreads Islam, he will get the same exact reward. So inshallah, you know, Ta'ala um, will be here tonight, we'll enjoy the program with uh, uh, um, our dear brother and subhanAllah Sheikh Junaid Jamshid himself I had a long conversation with him earlier and beautiful uh, subhanAllah da'wah experience that he has himself that maybe he can share with us later inshallah but um, I, um, I you know unfortunately the time is limited and uh, I just wanted to invite all of you to attend our da'wah training you usually come you listen to uh, you know the information at the same time you witness how it's implemented um, you know, on the ground, as they say, and they say, and you see for yourself how people would uh, react and how people would accept Islam.